Tonight, choir practice at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, Colton's 8, and um, <coughs> uh, at Mace, at Mace, this evening at 6 o'clock. Prayer partners Tuesday, 10.30, and uh, we'll be leaving after that to go to lunch with Purple Team. We'd love to have you join us if you could. Notice there is a college student of the week. There's one every week. This week it happens to be Easton Finger. If you would drop her a note, she would greatly appreciate that. And just a side note, I know her birthday is at the end of this week. So just, uh, it would be a great day to, uh, to drop her a, a birthday um, card in, in the mail. That she would appreciate that. If you'll pay attention to the rest of the announcements in there, we would, uh, we would love that. Now, next week is um, our call festival in the afternoon. Couple of things, it's for everybody. It's not children, it's not you, it's everybody. So let me encourage all of you to be here. Part of next Sunday afternoon, beginning at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a chili cook off. It's kind of chili weather, so we can have some chili. So that means anybody bring a pot of chili, uh, and then somebody will be judging it, not myself. And um, after that, at a point in the evening, we'll all come in and eat together and have a good time together. There's also another uh, competition going on. It's called Pumpkin Something. Pumpkin Something. Whether it's pumpkin pie, whether it's pumpkin cake, whether it's pumpkin roll, whether it's... Uh, who knows? Whatever you decide you want to make out of pumpkin, we would love to have you bring it and share with other folks. And um, we'll, that'll be judged also, and we'll eat that at the same time that we eat uh, the chili. There will be a lot of other events going on uh, that evening, and so make plans to be here. I think you will thoroughly Enjoy it as we fellowship together and uh, work together, play together, and share together. We are delighted that you are here this morning, and it's our pleasure and honor to worship with you. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, we love you. We pray. God, we pray that you take all of the distractions away from us this morning. All the ball games that happened yesterday. All the ball games that are going to take place today. But God, today is your day. Help us to focus completely on you. Take away the events of yesterday and last night. And allow us to seek you with all our heart, mind, and soul. God, we love you. We pray. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Hopefully we'll get it out of here before that. Maybe you'll get it before that. There's no per perfect pumpkins. There's no perfect people. But we all can smile like a smiling pumpkin over there. We all have a, a rough exterior many times. We're, we're very warty. We're leprous. But God heals. And by the way, the farthest pumpkin looks perfect. But I promise you, if you get up close, it's not. It's not completely round. It's not completely. It's got a few scratches. As a matter of fact, if I turn it around, it's got a little dent. So it's just like us. We're gathered together. Imperfect people worshiping the perfect God. <coughs> so allow me to penetrate your soul this week. The first song we're going to sing is Trust and Obey. And I want you to sing it like you really trust and obey. But before we get there, Bonnie, if you would. That's not really what I had in mind. Actually, it is. Do it again. Wow. That wasn't the first one. You know, the reason I wanted her to do this is because that first one represents many of our lives. It's cluttered. It's loud. It's everywhere. It doesn't make sense. That first note represents many of our lives. That second note represents some other lives. And it's just, well, what's the point? It's there. It's a note. It's one note. What, what difference does it make? Next. Same note. But the difference is it's long and drawn out. And I think that's where many of us are in our lives. It's because we're not in tune with letting God refresh our souls. We're in the mundane. And we want to sing trust and obey, but what we want to do is just go, nah, and that's our lives. We can't get out of one day. We can't get out of the everyday. We're not looking for God and allowing Him to penetrate our hearts and our minds and our souls. We've got, yeah, going on. Or it's just, boom. oh yeah, that was my time with God. Or it's, yeah, very mundane. Next. Of trust and obey. Very pretty. The notes go together well, but here's the thing. This is what I want you to focus on this morning. It's the space between the notes that create the rhythm and music of life. It's the space between the notes. In other words, play the first two measures. Like the first one. God in the space between the notes of your life. That's where we are this morning. With me. Now I want you to stand and sing. Trust and obey.
you can be seated. The children can still come down. Uh, visit with Sister Don up here. It looks like he's got to be ready to go to sleep. Maybe some of you in the pews ought to need those uh, a little bit later. Good morning. How are y'all? Everybody sleepy this morning? No? I'm really sleepy. Maybe it's the rain. Okay, Mr. Rain. Sam, are you sleeping? You sure? Can't really talk. Alright, so sleep. Did you know that we sleep about 230,000 30, hours in our lifetime? That's a lot of hours, right? You know, it's about a third of your life that we sleep. Can you believe that? Eight hours of sleep, eight hours a day. Brooke sleeps like 12 hours a day. But um, that's a third of your life that we spend sleeping. Elizabeth spends about half of her life sleeping. To some more than others, right? So why do we sleep so much? Why is sleep important? It helps you grow. Good. Why else? Why do we sleep? It is good for you. Sam, what do you think? No? Ask him what do you think? Got any guesses? No? So sleep does a lot of good things for us. It is good for us, right? So when we, when we sleep, it's, it's better for our health, okay? Um, believe it or not, it, it helps us to think better and to do better in school, right? Did you know that? That sleeping can help you in school? Yeah, it can. So sleeping can help you in school. It's better for our health. Um, let's see, I wrote down a few things here that if I can find them, awesome, good. Um, it helps us to get sick less often, right? Um, and it reduces stress. And lastly, um, it helps us to get along with people better. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seems like I need a lot more sleep these days, right? So it helps us to get along with people. Um, sleep is really good for us. And you know what else? What helps us sleep? A pillow. A pillow helps us sleep. You know what? You know what kind of pillow this is. What is this pillow used for? It is a pretty pillow. So what's it used for? <laughs> it's for decoration. Yep. I like these pillows too. That when you're on the couch and you're watching golf or you're watching a football game, it's pretty boring. Um, then you can take this pillow and just take a little nap. Those are the things, right? All right. Uh, what is this pillow for? It is in your bed. It's for sleeping. You know what else? It's kind of big. You know what this? What Elizabeth uses this pillow for? That's just because it's too big. This is a body pillow. You know what a body pillow is used for? That way you can like you can hug it and cuddle with it, and it helps. Like if your if your back's hurting or your hips hurting or something like that, you can hang on to that, and it helps that. You know that? And then this one here. It's just a regular pillow. You know, what does a regular pillow help you do? It does help you sleep. It what? It pulls your head up, right? It keeps your back in alignment, right? So that you don't have a lot of back pain. And um, it just helps you sleep through the night. If I don't have a pillow, I'm not gonna sleep very well, am I? No, not at all. I need a good, comfy, soft pillow to be able to sleep. So, did you know that these pillows help us, help us find rest? But we're going to talk about this month, we're going to talk about our souls, okay? And that basically, God wants us to find rest in Him. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, Come to me, all who are, who are weary and who are burdened, and I will give them rest. And so basically, He's telling us that we need to come to Him to find rest in Him. You know ways that we can find rest in God? We can believe in Him, absolutely. Any other any other suggestions? We can find rest in Him by reading the Bible. Did you know that? That the more we, we can go to church, my next point, very good news. So when we read our Bible, um, we learn about God. And we find rest in His Word. It gives us peace and gives us understanding. And also, we can go to church. 
Um, in Genesis chapter 2, it says God worked for six days. And on the seventh day, He rested because He felt like it was important. And so in the same way, during the week, we're going to school. We're playing sports. We're running around. Your parents are running around everywhere. And we're just tired and worn out when it comes to Sunday. And so on Sunday, we can go to church. We can listen to the beautiful piano music that we've heard this morning. We can sing songs to God. We can talk to other people. And we can be together on Sunday and we can find rest. And when you go home, you can take a nap and it's all okay because it's on Sunday, right? And so on Sunday, when we go to church, we find rest in Him. And so God wants us to take this day. He wants us to, um, to rest and to be stress-free and to enjoy our family and enjoy our church families. Does that make sense? So in the same way a pillow helps us sleep at night because sleep is important for our lives, we need to go to church to find rest in God because that's important for ourselves. Let's pray together. God, we love you so much and we're thankful for all these children. Um, God, thank you for loving them. And, uh, thank you for their families. Um, God, thank you for teaching us today uh, that we should find rest in you. Um, that it's important to, uh, to be around family and church family. It's important to sing praises to you. Um, God, more importantly, is to, to sit and to listen and, and find rest in you and take away all the stress and anxiety that we have in this world. We love you, so Jesus' name. Oh, by the way, it's my turn for y'all to uh, stand up and turn to your neighbor and bring one another this morning. <laughs>
Children, if you'd like to go with um, Becca and Denise, <clears throat> they'd love to spend some time with you this morning. Now would be the time if you would like to go with them. Please do so. <laughs> As we continue to think about our soul, trust and obey. Take time with God in prayer. And this morning, these ladies are going to sing, I am not alone. I want you to listen. And if you want to sing, you feel free to sing along with them. But particularly pay attention to the words that are being sung. And let them be the words of your heart to our Lord.
favor. I want you to fold your hands in front of your lap. I want you to close your eyes. That's everybody. In just a moment, I'm going to count to five. And what I want you to do is breathe in five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to count to five again. I want you to just hold it for five. That might be a struggle for some of you. Get it? And then I want you to breathe out on the next five. So it'll be three counts of five. We'll breathe in. We'll hold it. We'll breathe out. Ready? Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale. One. Now, keep your eyes closed. Keep your hands in front of you. Imagine, if you will, this is God trying to speak to you. And, and by the way, what you just did is impossible to do without your Creator. Because He's the one who gives life. He's the one who sustains life. And he's also the one who takes life. He's the creator. And in doing so, as you do it again in just a moment, I want you to imagine, <clears throat> your eyes closed, Genesis chapter 2, when God made the earth and the heavens, no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth. And no plant of the field had yet sprung up. The Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. And the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. So when we do this again, I want you to imagine that God is breathing the breath of life into your very being. Because He is. And then I just want you to imagine holding on to that feeling and then just releasing. Because as you do so, it's very similar to God will restore my soul in Psalm 23. <sighs> wow. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we just need to stop and take that breath. It's the life between the notes. It's the space between the notes that truly create life. All right, here we go. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it. Two, three, four, five. Now breathe out. Now I'm going to want you to do it one more time. You're thinking, this is really weird, but no. As you breathe in, I'm going to speak to you. And as you breathe out, I'm going to speak to you. Ready? Breathe in. Father, speak to me. Breathe out. Now, Lord, give me a chance to share. Open your eyes. That's who we're supposed to be. Breathe in. And share. Breathe in and know that He is good. And share the goodness of who He is. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My burden will make your burden light. 
It says this in, in the gospel. The problem is we want to go through life doing it on our own. And we can't find that relaxing moment that you just had an opportunity to. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Sometimes y'all just need to come in here. Okay, forget y'all. I'm going to preach to myself. Sometimes I just need to come in here and take that deep breath. And say, thank you, Lord. Because life is so much like that chord that Bonnie played. And we can't seem to find the rhythm of our life. Think about these things. Now, if you'll take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Mark, we're going to kind of look at it just briefly, Mark 8, which is where we started last week. Mark 8, beginning with verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Now we talked a little bit about that last week. But let me just emphasize again. Guess what? You matter to God. God loves you. But it's all about Him. It's not all about you. This world is not all about you. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And he goes on. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and the gospel will save it. What good is it? I've got it underlined. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? And then the next part, and I talked a little bit about last week, or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? There's absolutely nothing you can do to exchange for your soul. God created your soul. God gave you your soul. God gave you life. And He is the sustainer of life. And He wants to spend time with you in this life. The problem is we don't make time for Him. And there's absolutely nothing you can do to exchange that for Him. Ruth Barton wrote a poem how she talks about the loss of the rhythm of life. It says this, Holy One, there's something I wanted to tell you, but there have been errands to run and bills to pay. Arrangements to make, meetings to attend, friends to entertain, washing to do. And I forget what it is I wanted to say to you. And I mostly forget what I'm all about or why. How many of your lives does that describe? Man, I've got to tell you something. But wait, i got to... And I, I, I had something to tell you, but don't remember what it was. God wants to spend time with you. And this morning we're talking about soul care and restoration of the soul because God restores your soul. There's a couple of words that are used in the biblical text. The Hebrew word for soul is nephesh. And it's really life and it 
is really the idea, that's the same word that I read in Genesis when he breathed the breath of life into him. Nefesh means soul, self, life, person, and even heart. It's all of who you are. The word for soul in the New Testament, because the New Testament and the Old Testament were written in two different languages, for the most part. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, for the most part. The New Testament was written in Greek, Greek for the most part. And so the Greek word for soul is suke. And it's spelled really P U uh, excuse me P S U C H E It denotes the breath of life the soul the natural life of the body the immaterial invisible part of a man the soul Now, the Greek word suke is also kind of how we have moved into an English word of psyche. It's the psyche of yourself. It's the psychology of yourself. But it's the inward being of who you are. Now, What I want you to think about this morning is this. Where is your soul in compared to where God would want your soul to be? How are you taking care of your soul? You see, I know folks, and I shared this with you last week, in a hurried state, I know folks who go to the gym every day to work on their bodies. And they do it for a good reason. I mean, they want to stay in shape. They want to stay healthy. But what are we doing to maintain our soul health? Many of you do many things to try to stay healthy in life. We go to doctors. Well, guess what? The ultimate healer, the great healer is God and Jesus Christ. And the whole point is he is the one. He's the healer of our soul. Part of the problem that we are with our lives. Just think about your life for a minute. How much of your time, effort, whatever is spent caring for your soul? What does that look like? What does that look like? How much time do I spend with Him? Getting to know Him. So that he can restore my soul. The whole point is, if you don't know him, he can't restore you. Because you're not allowing him to. There's an interesting statistic that uh, I read and it says this. The U.S. Navy spends about a billion dollars a year in extra fuel and maintenance because of something on a ship called a barnacle. Now, if you don't know what a barnacle is, if, you, if a boat or a ship sits in the water or salt water, there are things that attach itself to the ship. And those things are barnacles. And when the ship takes off, it is no longer streamlined. Because all of these things are slowing it down and it's costing extra fuel, it's costing extra time. But not only that, they spend a billion dollars in extra fuel, but they also spend a billion dollars or within that in getting rid of those barnacles. Scraping those barnacles off. If you ever go to a marina in, in the... In the, in the in the salt water, you'll notice as, bo- uh, as boats are docked, every, every so often, they'll pay somebody to come along and scrape the barnacles off the boat. Why? 
Same reason. To prevent drag. To prevent things from slowing you down. To keep it streamlined. The thought process here is this. Those things are sucking the life out of those boats. What in your life is sucking the life out of your soul? And I'm going to explore a few of those things. Life in general, obviously. We're so, ah, like, you know, that, that chord. We're so many different ways. We've got so many things to do. And by the way, many of them are very good. But if you don't stop and take care of your soul, you're going to lose it in the process. Many of us have children. And our children are involved in so many things and we have to get them involved in so many things because they've got to do this and they've got to do that and they've got to be the best and they've got to do this. And, and I'll be honest, we worship our children instead of taking care of our own souls. And that even goes to grandparents. You know, we'll do whatever we can for our children, but what are we doing for our own souls? you got to take care of your soul. Now, how? Well, wow. A lot there. And I'm going to quickly address a couple things. One, own your life. Take responsibility. Stop playing the victim card. You own your life. You can't blame it on anybody else. The problem is internal, not environmental or external. You own your life. Get alone with God and determine your values and your priorities. Here's the thing. Write them down. Write them down regularly. Now, I'm not... You know, a lot of folks are into journaling, and I'm, I'm great with that. But here's the thing. If you don't spend time by yourself with God or with one other person so that you can connect and actually write some things down, God, this is what you're speaking to me about. How do you go back and figure out, oh, wow, there's been a difference made. Third, make the hard decisions. <laughs> here's the key the hardest part in carrying any of this out is doing it so the bottom line is to borrow a phrase from Nike just do it stop making excuses just do it And the fourth thing is perform regular maintenance. Practice the discipline of planned neglect. Ooh, practice the discipline of planned neglect. Now what I'm saying here is this. We get so involved in so many things. You know what, what happens if I let go of one thing over here? So I can spend time getting right with my creator. And getting some soul care time. Now I've got a couple of ideas and thought processes. And some of you can't do them. And I'm not even sure I can. But we'll start with this one. And then we'll move on maybe next week. We'll start with this one. How many of you have one of these? Yeah, raise your hand. Oh, wow. Some of you have two of them. Because you got this job and that job, and you got to take care of this, that, and the other. Who knows? You may even have three. I'm going to suggest, and some of you may do it already. I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to try. Unplug. Choose one day this week. Not an entire day. I'm going to start small. 
unplug from 6 o'clock in the evening until you go to bed. One day. One day. Just unplug. That means time away. Because here's the thing. We've developed so many relationships through this way that we'll talk through this, but we don't talk face to face. We don't know how to communicate with one another. Therefore, we really don't know how to communicate with God because you can't text God. I mean, I guess you could. We don't know how to build a relationship. So begin to start to unplug. Just one day. That's going to be hard for me. I, I get it. Unplug. One day. Four hours. And, and I'm saying six to ten. You know, basically that's basically what you're going to do to go to bed. Develop a relationship in that time. Get to know your kid again. Get to know your husband again. Get to know your wife again. And if you don't, if this is not an issue for you, turn off the TV. Unplug. If this is not an issue, cut off the internet. Do whatever it takes to develop a relationship and then begin to develop that relationship because the way that we help each other in life, spiritually, together, is by developing relationships. Develop that relationship with another and begin to talk about what God is doing in your life. That's the key. Now, your church has taken the step. We are providing you with some keys to be able to do so. And I know it's internet, but just work with me. We purchased a... Um, um, help me. Curriculum, basically, is called Right Now Media. And there are so many Bible studies out there. If you want to do one with, with, with your family, it's there. If you want to look, and there's, there's children's stuff out there, there's so much good stuff out there that you can use. All you have to do is give us a, a valid email, we'll sign you up, and it's there for you to use. I'm going to show you a video, a little bit about what Right Now Media can do for you and for us. Our church is a light in the darkness, a city on a hill. Every believer is called to make a difference in the world, to love God completely, and to make disciples of every nation. But in this busy, mobile, noisy world, it can be difficult to even do the basics, to pray, to read the Word, to bring the love of God to our marriages, families, neighbors, and coworkers. We know you're here because you want to be a part of God's mission on the earth. You want to experience the abundant life that Scripture talks about. You're looking to connect your faith to every part of your life, every day of the week. That's why our church is subscribing to Right Now Media and making it available for free to every member of our church. You'll have access to over 10,000 online Bible study videos on parenting, marriage, finance, discipleship, leadership, and many more. The videos can be used in Bible study groups or for personal devotion. There's also a huge library of safe biblical kids videos. We'd love to see every member of our church utilizing Right Now Media. Small group leaders leading their adult or youth groups through engaging Bible study series. Children enjoying safe programming that doesn't just entertain, but helps lay a strong spiritual foundation. Families spending quality time together going through devotional Bible studies. Couples using biblical studies on marriage, parenting, and finance. Applying God's Word to every area of their lives. We want to help you grow as a disciple of Christ. And we want to help you become a disciple maker in your home, your school, your workplace, your neighborhood, in whatever mission field God has called you to. We believe that this free resource will help equip and unleash you to live out your faith in every area of life. To experience God-centered, abundant life, not just on Sundays, but every day. We are for you, and God is for you. He wants to empower you every day to live for Him. Together, we can be a light in the darkness, a city on a hill. This is a great resource that is there for you to use as a family. Smile at home.
as a small group leader, maybe you want to get a group to start to study together. There's our, there are already a couple of Sunday school classes that are going to be using it. Children's ministry will be using it. The youth use it. You have an opportunity to use it, and it costs you nothing. Because the church has signed up for well, now, your tithes are there for it. How's that? But on the back here, in just a moment, we're going to take up an offer. If you would like to subscribe, all you've got to do is put your name and your email address. Make sure it's legible. Okay? So that we can get it in there. And it will be put in for you to be able to use. What a great opportunity for us to begin to disciple in many different ways. As the ushers come, we're going to take up an offer. I know it's a strange time to take up an offer, but it's always good to give. But during this process, if you would like to receive this, all you got to do is drop this in there, and you will receive an invitation from me. Some of you have already received it, because we have to be one of them. We'd love to have you be a part of this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a part of restoring the soul, spending time with you. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the replenishing rain that we really need. And thank you for uh, giving us the ability to earn the livelihood. Now we come in time to give a portion of that back to you. Bless the gift and the giver and help us to be a light to this community and grow your church. In your name we pray. Amen. When peace like a river
Amen. Let me say thank you for being here to worship with us this morning. What an honor it has been to worship with you. My prayer for you this week is soul care. Soul care. We'll continue to work on that next week. We'll continue to explore how we can be better at maintaining our souls and our connection. Would you stand and let's be dismissed. Donald's going to have our benediction. If you've got a decision to make, if you want to talk to somebody Maybe. about knowing the Lord, I'm always available. I'll speak to you after. You just let us know. Donald's up here always. Thank you again for being here. Pray together. Lord, we love you so much. God, we are grateful that you are a relational God who uh, wants to commune with us. God, you want us to spend time with you. And as we go throughout this week, God, I pray that we make time for that. God, I pray that we uh, spend time in our words, spend time in prayer with you. Um, God, spend time um, loving and encouraging our families because that's what you call us. Lord, we ask that you uh, fill us up, that you meet with us this week. Um, and you help us to grow in a relationship with you so that we can grow in a relationship with others. We love you, in Jesus' name, I pray.